Houston, this is Captain Rhodes. Go ahead. We've arrived at the distress beacon. It appears to be a derelict spacecraft. I'm going to investigate. Houston! Houston! We have a problem. We have a major problem. We have misfits in space. <laughs> in space, no one can hear you scream for a better podcast. <laughs> <laughs> It's very avant-garde, post-modern kind of thing. That means oh. artsy. Oh, okay. As a teenager, I jerked off so many times and thought of those robot titties. I'm just going to be honest. <laughs> Thrill me. Movie. 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 Misfits. 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 Is it, like, fun for what it is? Uh. No. Kind of. You ready for us? Uh-huh. All right, so we're all good. No, but that never stopped me before. Okay. <laughs> I don't need consent. <laughs> <laughs> Not what I meant. <laughs> all right, and welcome back. We are the Movie Misfits. I am John Spooky Rhodes. Joining me, as always, is Crippled Cody and Jason Gray. Guys. Hello. How the fuck are hey. you? I'm all right tonight. How are you guys? I'm doing pretty good. I am doing so much better than the last time we recorded. And, uh, God, I hope it shows. <laughs> Cause, okay. I knew that some tragedy was on the horizon last time we recorded. And since then, we're actually kind of a week behind in everything because a shitstorm just kind of hit. And,. Man, my life kind of turned into a country song for like a week there. And you know how they say bad things come in three? Well, holy shit, man. Fucking dead serious country song. Like, all right, my, my dog died in my arms. Uh, Yeah, they put her to sleep. I was holding her. It's fucking tragic. Um, It's not that we just chose to do that. She'd been you know, fighting, uh, liver failure and issues. So yeah, sad. Did you get a dog drunk? <laughs> no, no. See, um, <clears throat> she had separation anxiety and, uh, would like to get out of her crate and kind of run amok while we were home. And one night she happened to get a bottle of ibuprofen. I don't know how. And she ate the entire bottle, which, as it turns out, ibuprofen is incredibly bad for dogs. So, oh, wow. yeah, wow. yeah, a lot of a lot of money to vets. Um, she spent about a week at a vet and she she did good. She she fought. And I think we had about another five months with her before it was just time. It was the right decision. I mean, yeah. Wow. But then the following day. So that happened Friday, and then Saturday, my wife lost her job. So that was a kick in the nuts, you know, going from upper middle class to down to my class. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And then the very next day, so then Sunday, my uncle died literally at my parents' house in their yard. How did that happen? He, he's had a stroke and two heart attacks and he was over there and he just dropped. He had a massive heart attack and there was nothing anyone could have done. So, oh man, that's terrible. But you know, it, it, it could have been worse. At least, you know, your family isn't black and otherwise he would have got shot in the yard. Right. At least that didn't happen. (laughs) (laughs) R.I.P. John's uh, uncle. I'm sorry to hear that. I also apologize for that last joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Like I, we've said before, he loves triggering people. But for anyone that's watching the video of this, which is no one because I'll never release this. I'm sitting here shirtless with my hat on backwards and cargo shorts on 
we're ready for some fucking 90s bullshit here, which means we're going to be talking some horror from the 90s. But not just that. We've already said that we're doing horror in space. So, Jason, this was your idea. What are we doing? <sighs> All right. So there's this trope where it seems like every fourth movie or so, a lot of the big franchises decided, hey, let's go into space. I don't know why. Does anyone have any idea why this trend started happening? Well, in my opinion, I think because, you know, the, uh, the original of a movie franchise is the original. The sequel has enough stuff going for it to build off of the original. Right. Then you got... The second sequel, part three, where they try to take it, you know, in New York City or, you know, somewhere (laughs) weird. And then it really is. It's part four where all the executives and the producers and all that just throw their hands in the air and like, fuck it. You know what? Let's take it in space. What the fuck else we got to lose? I'm not sure. Here, let me toss out a a couple because these are the ones that I'm aware of. So we have, uh, let's see, Leprechaun went to space. Yep. Critters went to space. Mm-hmm. Hellraiser went to space, and those were all right. number four. Yep. And then Jason for number ten went to space. Yes. Am I missing any? I probably I just was thinking of one, and it just went out of my head. All right. If, <laughs> if it comes to you, yeah. just jump out there. But okay, so we'll rewind. Just. <laughs> uh, you better put in a better goddamn sound effect than what you just did. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Jesus, <All right>. save. <laughs> so, Leprechaun, I have no idea. I assume that that was just, like Cody said, they had no fucking idea what the hell to do with that franchise. Uh, Leprechaun, I figured, you said they give no fucks and just said, we're right. going to space. Right. Well, they uh, took Leprechaun to the hood, too, so they obviously didn't give a fuck. <laughs> they went twice. <laughs> Oh, that's right. Don't remind me. Jesus Christ. <laughs> but with Critters, like, it's a natural progression because the, they're aliens. So it yeah, kind critters of makes sense. Critters is the one that actually made sense. Right. Um, honestly, I would have probably taken it to space in three. And, yeah. well, when we actually get into Critters, uh, we'll get into it. But anyway, Hellraiser, it doesn't even make sense with Hellraiser because, like, the story of Hellraiser 4 is almost complete and then it's just bookended with space shit like just tacked on wait a minute i gotta disagree with you on that the way that hellraiser 4 is set up is it it is in space it's it's happening so far in the future because they're trying to have the end of at that time clive barker's end to, to the pinhead story so it was naturally based in space but yes you're right all of the middle parts and the huge portion of the movie was uh, it was in the past right so you're right to a certain extent but i do consider hellraiser 4 um an in space movie because that's the, the main frame of that movie oh i'm not denying that it is a space film i'm just saying that it's kind of bookend and oh yeah you're right you're i right. mean if i was the producer I would say just cut the space shit and finish it on Earth because, A, we're going to save a shit ton of money and the story kind of makes sense without the space shit. Well, then again, if you were the director, you wouldn't even want your name credited in this. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll With, get to that. When it comes to Hellraiser 4, uh, there actually is someone who didn't want their name on that movie. Yeah, no. Yeah. yeah. Um, there is an Alan Smithy on there. Yeah. Yeah, it's the director. <laughs> There's a lot of uh, stuff going on behind the scenes. I would love to see a director's cut of that movie to see what they really intended. I always think to myself, like, man, I'd love Scream Factory to pick up on that shit one of these days. All right. We all know Jason X was just, you know, oh, let's just put him in space. And they just wanted to keep the rights. So let's just jump into it then. And we're already, you know, ankle deep. So let's dive fucking in Hellraiser. Okay. By the way, we're balls deep. We're not ankle deep. We're balls deep. Okay, so we're already balls deep into Hellraiser. Thank you. Let's just try and thrust what left of the rope we got and see how much further we can go. I gotta ask real quick. Do you guys hate Hellraiser 4 Bloodline? No. No, I actually really enjoy it. 
No, I think it's a really messed up, flawed movie, but I think the the bones of a solid story are there. Exactly. Yeah, I totally agree. And it's funny, I'll gloss over what I'm about to say. I actually like almost all of the Hellraiser movies, except for Revelations. But um, Hellraiser 4, I... Huh? I said you're wrong, but continue. Okay. I um, I fucking... I, I really liked Hellraiser 4 as a kid. I liked it as a teenager, and I liked it as an adult. That's how I feel like if there's a movie I like in all three stages of my life, then I really, really like it. But yes, it's a flawed fucking movie, and it, you cannot sit there and say, well, compare it to, you know, the first and second one. No, but it is a decent movie, and uh, you're right, Jason. No matter the flaws that it has, it's a nice end to the Clive Barker story of her pinhead. So. Yeah, I really like the first four Hellraiser movies. They really work as a single story. I think I mentioned this last week or the week before. Yeah, I, I think I said that too on an old episode Um, because Hellraiser 3 is one of my favorite horror movies, one of them. And yeah, yeah fuck you, John. And uh, <laughs> but you're right. I, I look at that movie as well as a just a standalone film. I don't look at it as, you know, as a part of the other two or the other four or whatever. But um, yeah, Hellraiser 4 is not that bad of a movie, guys. And I think it gets shit on uh, in a little bit of an unjust way. And I totally agree. Hellraiser 4 was actually the very first Hellraiser that I watched. I remember when the trailers come out and I, I just, just sold. It looked awesome. And it's it's actually pretty decent. Uh, Jason, you're 100% right that the bones there are set up for a fantastic Hellraiser film. And it, it falls a little short, but it's still a good film. Um, mm-hmm. With that one, I, I like that we get to know the past. We, mm-hmm. we get to know how the box came to be, the Lamont configuration, how um, hell has even changed because we have, oh God, what was her name? A- Angelique? Was that it? Angelique? Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. The the demon from the past. And then we have Pinhead and, and the just position between those two. And I just got to say real quick, you guys, is it just me or did Angelique have some motherfucking DSLs? That stands for dick sucking lips. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she could have sucked fucking every pin off of Pinhead's head. And, and, you know, that's all she needed to do is keep her rightful place in hell, right? <laughs> that's a mental image. <laughs> yeah, you're and, welcome. and you know what? You're saying that as a joke, but you bring up an excellent point, too, because with the differences between those two, she was all about sex. She used her sexuality and everything. And that was her way of seducing people, whereas Pinhead used pain and suffering. And and in just those differences, I think, were really interesting. And then on top of that, we have the story of um, Le Marchand, the family, and how their bloodline yeah. was cursed because they accidentally created the Lamont configuration. And, oh, it, it's actually I- really good. I kind of saw Angelique, or however you say her name, I kind of saw her as like a replacement for Julia in a weird kind of way. I know their backstories yeah. are a little different, but she definitely reminded me of Julia from, from the first two films. And knowing they wanted to keep Julia around as a character, as the, the main bad force, that kind of makes sense that they plugged in someone else. Right! And I'm sorry, I know this isn't a Hellraiser episode, but I just found out about that a few months ago that... The Julia character was originally meant to be the main antagonist throughout the franchise. And, you know, when, when you think about it, it makes sense. Because at the end of Hellbound, you know, that fucking uh, uh, janitor or whoever goes back up to that room and the, the tower thing comes back up from the bed. And Julia's in, in that thing again. So she's alive, clearly, still in hell. But, yeah, that I don't know. That just blew my mind when I found out about that, that Julia was supposed to be the main antagonist all this time. Yeah, Angelique, mm, she could suck a golf ball through a fucking garden hose. You know what I'm saying, you guys? <laughs> Anyways, getting back on topic. While we were making fun of why they go to space, I actually think with Hellraiser, it works conceptually because the first movie was very personal, just a few people in a home and uh, the brief Cenobite poking out into our world trying to do their thing. The second movie uh, expanded it more, had humans going to hell to do their thing to to stop the Cenobites. The third movie really brought 
uh, the Cenobites to Earth and created the new ones on Earth. And I know a lot of people like making fun of those, but I feel like it made a lot of sense to do that at that point in time. And so it makes sense to go from hell on Earth to hell in space. You're right. As where absurd as that may sound. You're right. Though. Where the fuck else could they have taken it? Hell to the opera? <laughs> You know, I really, like you guys were saying, I, I really wish we'd get like a, a director's cut of this because that's that's why he's credited as Alan Smithy is because they started to take control away from him and he just didn't want his name attached anymore. They made too many changes. And, you know, I, I would love to see his vision because I know the script, there's huge parts of the script that were not included. Like Angelique in the past, she had her own Cenobites and how they were very marionette like and a lot of shit like that that just sounds so fucking interesting that i i really want to see it yeah and wasn't there a version of the script where angelique was born with a penis too i thought i heard that you guys oh no no that's I that's angela you got you got your franchise oh, confused god it got it got i got my sleep away camp in my hell right. god, yeah screwed up um <laughs> you know fucking oh fuck i lost my train of thought jason mm, fucking, how about that fucking that was the last Fuck it. Yeah. God damn. For for the franchise is going to space. I actually think Hellraiser is probably the best one for the franchises. I'm I'm putting that out there yeah. right now. I think it's it's my personal favorite. Out of the choices the, we got, yeah. And what I would say is I've always enjoyed it. I've always just kind of wanted a slightly different ending though. Mm-hmm. I I always thought it'd be awesome. If the whole trap was just to get Pinhead there so he could shoot him out into the sun and, you know, we could have the last line, let there be light, you know, instead of it like transforming like a fucking transformer or some shit and lasers coming everywhere and eh. well, you know, I well, kind of like the space station becoming a giant form of a puzzle box itself. It does kind of have a nice wraparound, but. I got to say that let there be light line is kind of awesome. Thank you. I, I, I just didn't, I don't know. Maybe this is just me, but at the very end when pinhead said, all men, I just, I don't know how it was like, he bent the knee at the very last second, you know, he's this Prince of darkness, you know, but he knew his end was there. So he said, all men, I don't know if I would have liked it better if he would have just not said anything. And then the explosion, I, I don't know. I think, it's not like he was bending the knee. I've always kind of taken it that it's kind of sarcastic, you know, like throwing it back in, in, in uh, La, uh, what, what the, I can't La remember the characters. What was that? La Marchand? Yeah, La Marchand, throwing it back in his face of, amen, or, it, yeah. So. Ah, no, he, just, he seemed defeated in that very second, so I'm well, not he sure. he was. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> oh, man. And then the years to come after that, the fans of the franchise were the ones defeated. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> I've, the rest of them should have been in space. I've done a retro on all of them. And after four, it's a steep decline. <laughs> Real quick, did I hear you um, give me... Did you give me shit when I said Revelations was the bad one? Uh, I don't remember. Okay. A conversation for another time. Yeah. Son of a- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So where do we want to go from here? Because we covered Hellraiser. I don't think there's a whole lot else to say about that. Um, I did think of one other franchise movie. Oh. Kind of. Cloverfield Paradox. And for me, that one just about inches out Hellraiser as being a little bit better. I haven't seen that one. I can't talk on it. I'm sorry, guys. I forgive you. <laughs> Jason, do you forgive him? Oh, well, yeah, I guess. He is the one that helps us keep all this together, so we have to forgive. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I I actually haven't seen that movie either, so... Ah, okay, so we we'll, won't dwell too long on it, but it's yet another Cloverfield movie set in a space station doing experiments, and um, something goes horribly wrong, and weird shit start happening. In fact, a lot of the stuff that starts happening... Uh, I'm going to try to speak vaguely just to not spoil anything in case anyone does want to go see it. But it really plays with spatial awareness and uh, things inside other objects. So it kind of has that similarity to uh, Hellraiser type 
ideas. It's a really good uh, science fiction based horror movie. I mean, it's not mind blowing or anything, but I thought it was a really solid 90 minutes to uh, entertain myself. Just from what you said there, it kind of reminds me of like From Beyond, but in space. Kind of, yeah. Not quite as over the top as that movie gets, but in similar fashion. Okay. It's it's funny you mentioned I just rewatched From Beyond just a few days ago. Because I <laughs> for, totally forgot that it has that black guy in it who starred in, um, you know, The Devil's Rejects. He played a cameo in it, but he starred in the original Dawn of the Dead. Yeah, Ken mm-hmm. Foray. Yeah, I told that's a that's a fucking gem. A yeah, yeah. You know, in the future, we should have an episode on uh, Jeffrey Combs horror movies that he's uh, been. I thought you were going to go H.P. Lovecraft. Oh, uh, well, maybe that too. But <laughs> fucking Jeffrey Combs, man, he's amazing. You know, like he's another. He's one of those actors that just doesn't get credit. You know, like he should. You got an excellent point there. I'll make a a note of that. We'll we'll put a pin in it and put it up on the bullshit board. Yeah, future episode, you guys. He's not still... I don't think he's still doing movies right now, because he's pretty old. Uh, I think he is. They're I just not say good I heard movies. he did something recently. Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, Anyways. Yeah, let's keep this truck, and let's, let's jump yeah. to uh, Critters, because yes. why not? Yep. And uh, I'll start on this one. Um, This was a first-time watch for me, because I thought I'd seen it. Turns out I hadn't. And... Uh, from just little bits and pieces. I haven't seen three either. So I've now seen Critters 1 and 2. And I've seen those multiple times. But now mm-hmm. I've seen four once. And never seen three. So uh, it was better than I expected. I can I can easily say that. It makes sense. Um, and for what it is. It's a lot better than it should be. And it has a hell of a cast too. Which is really surprising. Yeah, I watched it for the first time myself a couple months ago, and can't say I'm a big fan of it, but really it's more a matter of they had big ideas that just didn't pay off, and the production values on the movie are just, like, rock bottom, and it looks so cheap. The movie, for when it was made, it should look better than it was. I'm not gonna really harp on that too much. It's a fucking Critters film. I mean, they've never been known for great production value or anything like that. And then on top of that, you have Brad Dorff. Angela Bassett. Yeah, Angela Bassett. And the captain's actually semi-known, too. Yeah. Three pretty good actors. And then they brought Ugg back. And I have to say, that was kind of a disappointment for me to have Ugg be the bad guy. Spoiler alert for, you know, a 30-year-old movie. It was a good idea, but again, they just didn't do anything with it. They just, oh, he's bad now. Okay. (laughs) Then he's just not in the movie until the last 10, 20 minutes. Yeah, he had a brief cameo and then was there for the last 10 minutes. But I don't know. For what it is, just this cheap little sci-fi horror film, I didn't think it was bad. Although I'm half-heartedly defending it, probably because I went in expecting utter shit. And was pleasantly surprised. It's like, oh, the acting's not horrible. Well, clearly it's very cheap, but, you know, they shot around it, and it's it's okay. It's a Critters film, and, you know, the, the Krites were there, and we had a couple deaths. I mean, none of them were great, but the franchise isn't known for great deaths either, so it was good enough. Yeah, I, I think I gave okay. it two and a half stars. Yeah, that's about where I land. Yeah. I felt they had... I don't want to get too deep into the movie here, but... um. There was a missed opportunity in that movie. The whole thing with the film is this corporation wants to get a hold of the Krites to do their alien experimentations with to try to make this ultimate war killing machine. The Krites themselves start messing with the machines because don't forget they're actually intelligent beings. Right. And they just, again, don't do anything with it. Oh, 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 I have that answer. Because I I have the the Critters box set, and I was watching the special features on it. Let me just finish my thought, because I I don't want to lose it. And if they had just uh, done something where they created a super critter, I feel like they they wanted to do that, and I'm probably willing to bet you're going to tell me there's some sort of uh, budgetary issue that happened. (laughs) Funny thing is, 
Critters 4 was directed by one of the longtime producers. Right. And they made three and four back to back. They had one week off in between. And in that mm-hmm. week, they took the sets that were three and made four. Mm-hmm. All right. And during that week, the director fine tuned the script, as a lot of directors do, to make it their vision. And that that's where he added in that there was going to be the super critter. Problem being that with that week's time frame, they didn't have they the money to build it, and they had blew most of their budget on the critters for part three. Right. So they weren't expecting it. They actually expected that one to be the cheaper one, and they actually mm-hmm. wanted to keep the sets and were trying to get the studio to allow them to make a haunted spaceship movie. And I think they said like one week or two weeks once they were <laughs> done filming Critters 4. So that's where their heads were at. Like Critters mm-hmm. 4 was the afterthought and the director tried to make a good movie and the, everyone else was just like, why are you doing this? We don't have the money for this. Mm-hmm. So. Hell yeah. My basic uh, summation of Critters 4 would be lots of ideas that they just didn't pull off. True, but one thing I can give it is uh, we get a lot more Charlie and we kind of get yeah. the evolution of his character because he hasn't evolved. I mean, the first one, he was the town drunk and then he kind of becomes the hapless hero, but then they don't do anything with him until four and he kind of becomes a hero? Question mark? Yeah. <laughs> Cody, have you not seen this one? Nope. <laughs> That's why I just was not talking because I, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I've never watched a Critters movie. Not one. Nope. Oh, I watched dude. I watched Gremlins one and two, but that's completely different, right? I I've never ever seen Critters. You know what's funny? I was watching that. My wife was there, and just kept glancing at it. And then once it was over, she turned to me and she goes, "Was that just a really bad ripoff of Gremlins?" It's like, oh, I'm so proud of you. Yes, that's exactly what this franchise is. <laughs> I'll tell you why. I because Critters, the majority of them are R-rated films, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, Critters so, was always R-rated, whereas Gremlins was no. The first one was PG, and then the next one was R. So yeah. Really? That's okay. I didn't know that either. Gremlins two is rated R, but the first one was PG. I think it's R. I'm not a hundred percent. The first one is PG because that was the one that got parents to complain, and they complained so much that there was push that they had to create PG thirteen. So. Boy, and again, not to continuously allude to my favorite movie of all time, but that's one of the reasons why Army of Darkness is rated R, because the Evil Dead franchise didn't go by the standards of the MPAA and go through the proper channels. But I digress. Um, I'm going to have to look into that later on about Gremlins and the controversy behind it. But anyway, to uh, uh, go on to what I was saying earlier, um, when I was a teenager, a young teen, my parents allowed me to watch Gremlins, but they viewed critters as like the adult you know uh, r-rated version of gremlins so they didn't want me to watch it they you know they basically let me watch gremlins and i feel like i feel like i i definitely watch gremlins too i just don't remember really anything about it um but no i so as a teenager a young young teenager i'm talking like 11 or 12 i just wasn't allowed to watch uh critters at all and then as by the time i got into adulthood like you know, Critters hasn't been popular that much in the past, like, you know, 15 years or so. So I just, I never picked up on the Critters franchise at all. Uh, the first one I will defend. The first one I think is actually pretty good. Um, it is a, a Gremlins ripoff, but amazingly enough, it's actually quote unquote loosely based on a true story. Jason, Why do you know this just... story? I do not. Okay, so there is, I'd have to actually do research to find the exact names, but there, there's this story, and it's in newspapers, and like you can go back and look that this was reported, but this uh, family reported that aliens had landed outside their farm and were trying to get into their house and attack them, and they spent all night shooting at the aliens trying to fend them off. 
Now there's been an episode of Project Blue Book based on this story. It's out there. Okay. And uh, Critters was actually loosely based on that. So basically they, they wanted to rip off Gremlins and someone heard about this crazy UFO story and just mashed the two together. And it's actually pretty decent. So I think I think you'd like it, actually. I, I do suggest you check it out. Or hold I, off and I, I'll force you to watch it for Easter. Fuck you. <laughs> you <laughs> are you talking to Jason or me? You. Oh, yeah, no, fuck you. <laughs> you ain't forcing me. You ain't forcing me to do anything that my uncle didn't force me to do. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I mean, see, that's the thing. These movies have to be available on something that I subscribe to, like either Shudder or Netflix or Hulu or something like that. So I'm not sure if any of them are on any of those services. Uh, they've been on on and off Shutter. I'm not sure their current status though. Right, uh, that's the one thing I've noticed about Shutter is they get decent stuff, but they only get it for like two or three months and then it's gone. Yeah. Right? Uh, oh, Nightmare on Elm Street. They only had that for um, a month, and boom, most of that was gone. Friday the Thirteenth. They had all of them for about three, four weeks, and b- then they were gone. <laughs> I know they had most of the Critters movies back when they did their attempt at the new binge or whichever one it was. Right. Oh, right. yeah. That really fucking horrible web series. Ugh. I didn't watch it. <laughs> I forgot I that watch... it kept going. Shit. I don't watch everything that Shudder produces. Like, the Deadlands sucked to me. Haven't gotten to that one yet. Don't bother. It's a waste of your time. You know, he loves trash cinema. Okay, go ahead and watch it then. It'll be a hell of a ride for you. (laughs) But speaking of trash cinema, we've got two left, and I say we do Leprechaun. We just dive fucking balls deep into his pot of lucky charms. You guys are going to have to walk me through this one again because I vividly remember Leprechaun 1 and 3. I remember 3 because of the robot titties, but... uh, I do not have much recollect of Leprechaun in Space. Um, this is right up Jason's alley. Uh, uh, I mean, it is it is trash. Like, yes, it is. It he, really, really is. He complained Every- about production value on Critters. This one is like fucking horrible. It looks like some guys made it in their garage, and it's almost like guilty pleasure level. It's so bad. It's so corny. It's so fucking cheesy. And you know what's crazy is I probably yeah. haven't seen it in over 15 years, and I watched some of it, and I remembered the lines and all this. It's like, oh my fucking god, this is so fucking horrible, but yet I remember it. <laughs> fuck, Jason, how the fuck did Leprechaun end up in space? Tell me. They never say. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Leprechaun 4, in space. Yep. Why the fuck not? <laughs> That's literally it. Uh, if I remember right, the movie starts with this uh, mercenary group of soldiers trying to stop some sort of space war, and they just run into the leprechaun on a moon somewhere. Because why not? I would pose the question why, but okay, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but everything I said about Critters 4 goes at least double for Leprechaun 4. Minus any redeeming value of recognizable actors you might want to actually watch. Um, Save for Warwick Davis. Real quick, a side question. Because um, they did two In the Hood movies for Leprechaun. Is that because the first In the Hood one got such good fucking feedback that they wanted to do it again? Pretty much. What, yeah, what? I think a lot of people liked it. They found it funny. And I think it just made money, you know, on home video. Yeah, and you know, you guys, I I got a brand new black nurse, and me and her talked the other day about how we were going to start watching black cinema together. And all all jokes aside, I fucking love, like, Eddie Murphy and stuff like that. And I'm going to have to suggest to her, like, hey, let's watch the two Leprechaun in the Hood movies, and we'll see how she feels about that. Maybe she'll quit on me. I don't know. Uh, uh, I'll be honest, I've never finished either one of those. Oh, okay. I like both of the In the Hood movies. One of them is a lot sillier than the other and is has some painful bits to it. I think it's that's uh, back in the hood to too. the hood, right? I think so. Um, 
But I don't know if it's just because number four had set such a low bar. <laughs> but there's actually something that works about Leprechaun in the Hood. The whole gold thing between the Leprechaun and the... the uh, oh, shit. Don't be racist. Don't be racist. Please don't be racist. The gangsters. Gangsters are... and rappers and stuff like that. That whole culture. And you can kind of mix stuff with his... Uh, love of making rhymes and rap and it works conceptually they don't always pull it off though i will say you're right about that the first in the hood movie with leprechaun it, it definitely did work in my opinion because you're right it the concepts and all that it it made sense it, it, it really made sense and and I, can you guys agree with this leprechaun he was kind of like a lower end version of a mix between chucky and freddie with his one lines and yeah. you know Especially they went full schlock by this point in the franchise. And yeah. yeah. The Leprechaun movies were always kind of meant to be a, at least a little bit silly. Yeah. I heard a rumor. Is it true that the original actor for Leprechaun, because he didn't come back to do Leprechaun Returns. And I heard it was because like he has a family now and he just doesn't want to do stuff like that. I'm not sure. That's actually what I heard. And I actually do like Leprechaun Returns. So I do too. It was decent. <laughs> Right, yeah. I, it's, I really it's a, love Leprechaun Returns. Yeah, it's, it's a like, good reboot of the franchise. It really works as a sequel and did everything I wanted it to do. And didn't they bring back an old character somehow yes. from like the very first one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not yeah. exactly. They used some voice actor that sounded a lot like Jennifer Aniston. No, that's not who I'm talking about. No, 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 about. no, no, oh, no, oh, no right, the special right, yeah, guy. No, I forgot. the uh, uh, Otis was his name? Oscar? One, something like that. Right, yeah, right, that the handyman. I forgot they brought him back. Yeah. Yeah. It was fun. One of the better sci-fi movies that I've seen. I'm not a fan of Leprechaun. Um, the first one's all right. For whatever reason, I've recently discovered that Leprechaun 4 kind of holds a special place in my slimy heart. But... <laughs> I would honestly say one is okay, and then returns is probably my favorite. But wait, John, can you just comment on the robot titties in part three? Can you just I tell don't me remember what? them. I don't remember it at all. Damn it, Jason! <laughs> robot titties. They exist. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jason, for that input. But I, there's just something about this one that. I'm I'm never going to defend it and say it's a good film, but if you ever find yourself in the mood for just this slocky, cheesy, really fucking bad movie, this will fill that void perfectly. Or, if you want to see something even worse, go watch Doom Annihilation. <laughs> <laughs> no comment on that by anyone? <laughs> I haven't seen it. I have not seen it. I've never wanted to see it. Uh, it's on Netflix. That's I, I remember I, the first Doom, and that's not that good. I I actually like it, you guys. <laughs> Which one? I like Doom Annihilation. It's a guilty pleasure of mine. Yeah, I was gonna say I thought you defended it before, and it was like, oh, you I need to it. see it, and it's like, eh, maybe. And if you get to see it for free, I I will say you should see it, but don't like pay money for it. You okay. Know? It just, it's, it's good, you guys. Jason, it's good. It's got a female lead, so, you know, you should like it, too. And, I don't know, it's, it's got action. <laughs> anyway. It's a movie. <laughs> it's a feature-length film. But, okay, let, let's get to the big talk piece. Cody, you were all obsessed about robot titties. So, Jason X has robot titties. And... Mm -hmm. Robot nipples. So let's fucking finish this off with this one. And I think it's fairly well known that if you've heard me before, I have a long history with this film. And I actually promised these motherfuckers that I would watch it. And I did. I actually went back and fucking rewatched Jason X for all you motherfuckers listening and these two assholes with me. And I pretty much stick by my opinion. <laughs> well, first of all, don't call Jason an asshole like that. It hurts his feelings. Second of all, Jason X, again, you have to view it as kind of like a standalone film, John. Open your fucking mind. That's, that's what I was really trying to do this time is uh, I was just trying to watch it on its own. And 
my issue with it is I don't Does it go like too silly for you? Does it go just a little too cheesy? I think it's the production value, the direction, like it it doesn't look good. Like it looks so fucking cheap and bad. And I've always said that it, it reminded me like I was watching an episode of that sci-fi show Andromeda, you know, before sci-fi started actually producing really good sci-fi TV series. Back before they started misspelling the word sci-fi. Right, right, right. Back when <laughs> they were like, hey, you have a buck 50, give us a TV episode, mm-hmm. but it has to be in space. <sighs> Jason X really is, it, it's a little too cartoony in a lot of ways, like... They didn't. I, I feel like the movie's not properly balanced in a way, you know. Like I can, I can totally get people's love for it because there is Jason, and there's a lot of fucking slaughter in this movie. Like he kills a lot of people, but I don't think Jason looks that good in this one. Like, why the fuck is he wearing shoulder pads? Kane Hodder is a big motherfucker. He doesn't need those. Right. The mask also- is goofy. I was just going to say that, too. I hate the way the mask looks in this one. Right. It's by far the worst mask. Um, the, the, overall, the actors in this are fucking horrible. And that's even by Friday the 13th standards. These people are bad. So, real quick, um, Jason Goes to Hell and Jason X, those were the, the first two New Line Cinema Jason movies, right? Right. I wonder... Jason Goes to Hell was such a dreadful movie. And I'm not saying that as a bad thing. Like, not not a dreadful as in bad production, but it was like, it was dark and gritty and there was oh. nothing really funny or silly about it. But then Jason X felt a lot more lighthearted and a little bit more silly. And, you know, like people could sit down and watch it as a popcorn flick, you know, and, and not be so depressing for casuals. And I wonder if they did that on purpose maybe, or am I just looking too far into it? Uh, there might be something there. They might have thought trying the course correct, but it could also just be that was the tone the movie went with when they thought of uh, stuff like having a virtual reality thing on a, a space station in the future. So you do a, a flashback poking fun at the the series love of killing teens having premarital sex. Hey, you want a beer? Or do you want to smoke some pot? Or we can have premarital sex. Let me go here real quick because I've actually done a fair amount of research on this because I love Friday the 13th. It is my second favorite franchise. I just, I've always loved it. And this one's always stood out to me as being kind of the redheaded stepchild that sets in the corner and licks the window. Um, okay. So with Jason goes to hell and Jason X, the thing is, is that they were new line and Sean Cunningham was back in charge. So with Jason X, they wanted to kind of start fresh. And with both of these Cunningham had say, So, like, he wanted to go back to Jason's family. He wanted to kind of get back to some of the elements of the first one. That's why we have the whole aspect with the Baia Voorhees, can he be born and killed and blah, blah, blah. That's why, right there. It it all comes from Cunningham. Um, And then with Jason X, once they decided, let's just put him in space, because Cunningham was running out of time to keep the rights, the script, from what I have read... And interviews, and if you listen to the commentary, Todd Farmer even says that his script has been greatly changed. It, like in the commentary, he says, "Oh, that's one of my lines that actually made the movie." So, my understanding is is that his script was pretty dark and in tone more with like Alien, where it was just dark, gritty, and Jason was kind of picking these people off one by one on the spacecraft. And then the director just kind of did whatever the fuck he wanted. And like everything is bright as shit and chrome and reflective. And I, I don't know how they produce this because the production level is insane to me. And like, I, I know there's been talk that Kane was difficult on that set, but Kane was from my understanding, just basically standing up for what Jason would do and having just watched it, 
some of the kills and stuff stand out to me. It's like, that doesn't seem like something Jason would do. Like, he's not going to grab one person out of three, sneak back into the dark, and then slowly crack this guy's neck. That's yeah, that's not he, Jason. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't a fucking Tom Clancy Splinter Cell game, for Christ's sakes, or anything right. like that. And that's, what, what, I, I didn't hear about that. What, uh... Kane Hodder was difficult to work with on that because he he had issues with the script. Well, from what I've heard is that, you know, he would keep giving like notes and stuff, trying to stand up and say, well, Jason wouldn't do this. Jason wouldn't act that way. So like the director would be like, oh, so I need you for whatever reason. He's kind of a foreign asshole in my mind, but I need you to go and uh, sneak up and, and snap this guy's neck. He wouldn't do that. He'd just fucking kill all three of them. He'd just go. No, no, no. And you'd need to grab this guy and pull him back and then snap his neck. That's not what Jason would do. Or I need you. I need you to grab Todd's head and and bash it into this container and then bash it again, really good. And it's like, but he would just bash him once and his fucking head would cave in or he'd go through it. It's, he's already done that in part right. six. And right. And then also like you know with the um. The sleeping bag, uh, everyone's favorite kill from part seven. What was it, or was it part four? Um, no, I think you're right with seven. Yeah, like that's it's known that Jason has so much power that he could, you know, crack your skull open with one shot to a hard object or whatever. But yeah, that he had to do it multiple times to that guy. It, it, Jason X really does stand out as a very different and unique entry. And I'm trying to think. What, was there other stuff going on at that point in the early 2000s that made them decide to go a silly route? Because I got to tell you guys, I hate the dialogue in that movie. It's so cheesy and over the top from what I remember. I I don't choose to watch that one when I got friends around because of how cheesy and stupid the characters are. I think some of the cheesy lines, like having just rewatched it, are very Todd Farmer. But... I think it was just they were sitting around talking, you know, because he Todd at the time was uh, Cunningham's assistant, I believe. And the producers were kind of trying to figure out how they wanted to go at Jason, where they wanted to take him. And Todd just kind of pitched that idea and Cunningham had him write up a script. Now, um, I actually found a draft of that script tonight. And I'm going to read it and I will actually talk on the next episode about that. Because I made sure that I didn't find the shooting script. I, I found a draft that is before that. So we'll, we'll see how close his early drafts are compared to the final product. That's awesome. I'm pretty sure everyone would be looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to hearing that one. You might have yeah. to read me a little story before the end of the night tonight, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, real quick, who is this Todd Farmer guy? What else has he done? Oh, Todd Farmer Jason? is the, the writer of it. Um, That was actually his first credit, I believe, but he did Drive oh, Angry, um, my Bloody Valentine remake. Oh, um, that's not a bad movie. No, not at all. Uh, Drive Angry is actually pretty good too. I really enjoy that one. Uh, shit, there was more. I can't think of it. I think he just did a trick like last year. That was his. Oh, so. was it? I love that movie. Yeah, yeah. I want to say there's more. After My Bloody Valentine, they kind of had a few things rolling. And I know that he did a draft for a sequel to that that just never got <laughs> off the ground. But they were actually in line to make... Um, a sequel to Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 until that fell apart like last minute so uh, I've actually heard really good things about that and I found that script too and I will be getting to that one at some point oh, oh I mean I mean oh so, sounds good, sounds good. <laughs> um, so I gotta ask real quick before we move on Jason X you guys do you think it could have been a better movie if it was directed by either A, Rob Zombie, or B, Ronnie Yu? Yes, on both. Yes, on both? <laughs> Probably. Okay. And I'm speaking as someone who's not a big Rob Zombie fan. Uh, you know, it's funny, and we can get into this on another episode too, but um, I'm not a Rob Zombie fan as far as his movie making goes. I know that's a little sacrilege. 
I, it's just so trashy. It's just that's another one of those I can't put those fucking movies on unless there's no one in my house and it's like three o'clock in the morning with the disgusting dialogue that's in it. Not that I have a problem with trashy dialogue. It's just he it's just an overabundance of suck my dick and lick my stinky cunt and stuff like that. Like, come on. <laughs> I will freely admit I generally like his stuff. And I think it's because he has a unique style. Now, I agree that he definitely has a flair with the white trash, but he has a really good visual eye. And I think that he showed great potential. And then I think his spirit was kind of crushed and he just doesn't give a fuck anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, Serious question. Is... uh... Is there a such thing as too much vulgarity or white trash talk in a horror movie? Like, is there something that you can think of that really takes you out of it? Like, like I was just thinking, like, because some of Rob Zombie's films, it's like some of that. Like, go ahead. Uh, there was something I saw recently that just really got on my nerves. Have either of you seen the movie Gutter Balls? No. Yes. Oh, oh my Jesus. fucking God. John, if you're gonna watch that, do not watch it around anyone, especially <laughs> wife. And no, that you're right, Jason. It's trash. It's like Go the ahead. opening scene is a graphic rape. Uh. And I just, uh. No, it's a graphic rape with a bowling ball pin. <laughs> a bowling ball pin. A woman gets raped by a bowling ball pin while these thugs are like, <laughs> "You're really giving it to her, aren't you, Porky Pie?" <laughs> like that kind of shit. It's really fucked up. And the sex scenes in it are real? I believe there's real sex scenes in that movie, I think. Right, Jason? Uh, not that I recall from mentioning in the commentary, but it also would not surprise me. Uh, believe it or not, the only sex scene in Mayhem, the Joe Lynch movie from like two years yes. ago or something, yes, I heard about is this. real. That's an awesome movie, by the way. I fucking love that movie. But real quick, John, so Jason has said gutter balls as, as something that's too far as far as like the trashiness and the vulgarity. What do you have one? Um, I agree with with the rape. That's that's never set well with me. Like that's one of the few things that I don't like about Rob Zombie's director's cut of Halloween. Yeah, like I, I get it. And I get what you're doing. You know, that used to happen back in sanitariums and however long ago. I, I get it. I think the other way is just better cinematically. Um, mm-hmm. But for like a movie, I, pff, uh, I spit on your grave. I mean, white trash just fucking oozing. And it's just despicable. Like 40 minutes of bad choreographed rape and no redeeming quality, really. Well, don't ever watch Gutter Balls because it blows that out of the fucking water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It was a little side uh, question I wanted to ask you guys before we moved on. But Jason, you haven't even really spoke on Jason X. So what is your opinion of this one? So here's a funny story. (laughs) Jason X is the very first Friday the 13th movie I ever saw. No shit. I am not joking. Wow. Did you like it? I had fun with it, but I also acknowledged that it's very cheaply made. Yes. And... One of you mentioned Andromeda. Me. Do you realize there's actually two people from Andromeda in this movie? No, I've only seen like one or two episodes. And it's just like the quality and like the sets and stuff like that. It mm-hmm. just screamed that. That was always the first thing that came to my mind. That Kevin Serbo. Yeah. yeah. It, it gets even better because on that show there was a robot and a soldier. I think it was. And those were the two actresses they brought into Jason X. But they swapped the roles and then did a little nudge, nudge, wink, wink acknowledgement of that fact in the script. And yeah, so, wow. so on the nose and in your face when they did it, if you know what they're talking about. And, you know, we didn't even touch upon Uber Jason. Oh. And the fucking shit CGI. Now, like some mm-hmm. CGI I can I can give a pass to, but there's just so much really bad cgi in this movie uber jason was that ever a toy because that's what they should have done with it i probably yeah i believe so he's also got a comic book line and a couple novelizations and what yeah 
They did a whole comic book on Uber Jason? <laughs> yes. Yes, and I think there's three or four novels that follow him. Jesus, kill me now. <sighs> I've hey. never liked that one. I don't get the people that praise it and absolutely love it, but the people that are just like, oh, it's kind of fun and whatnot, that I get. I can see that. I don't agree, but I get it. And uh, having just rewatched it, um, for any future retrospectives, discussions, anything, I will freely give the spoiler. This is my least favorite, Friday the 13th. Does anyone know what the budget is for uh, Jason X? Uh, yeah. Not enough, I can tell you that. I haven't seen <laughs> yeah. it. So, I mean, I'm just wondering, was it a lot larger than the rest of them? Or is that why it failed a little bit and looked cheap? Is because it wasn't high enough? Like, I don't know. Uh, it was somewhere between 11 and 14 million. Oh, wow. That's actually fairly low for a film like that. Um, right. Yeah. I would honestly say that that's probably the biggest reason. I mean... Because even when we were talking like critters and whatnot, at least I could say, hey, there's Brad Dorf and, you know, Angela Bassett, and they're giving good performances. Like, the script may not make 100% sense, but I can follow it. Watching this, I, I have no one to even latch on to. Like, the best performance is the badass Marine and Kane Hodder. Well, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, The cameo in the opening is the best performance. Can we all agree? Mm-hmm. You're talking about... Are you, wait, I'm probably wrong about this. Are you talking about the older guy with the glasses? Yeah, Cronenberg. He, yeah. Oh, God, I should have known that's who that was, but I knew he was someone important. <laughs> <laughs> yes. His performance is my favorite of the film, and that opening is my favorite. Like, uh, up until this recent rewatch, if I felt the urge, it was usually I was kind of tired... I was already in bed, and it's just like, I'll watch the first five minutes of this, and then once Jason X comes up, I'm just going to shut it off and go to bed. <laughs> I will say the one thing I do like about the aspect of Jason X is Jason does come off as a machine in Jason X, and I guess that is kind of the fun aspect of, of that movie. You know, it, in the other ones, he's Jason, you know, he's a killer and all that, but He's he's a machine in this movie. I think there's like 20 some kills in this movie. Yeah, if that's the one thing I can give it. It has I think the highest body count. And mm -hmm. that's that's ignoring the fact that he blows up an entire space station, so Yeah. We're going to ignore that million people right there, but yeah, this one has a huge body count and like if you just want to get fucked up and put this on in the background while you guys are are having a party or friends over or something like that, this is the perfect movie for that. If you want to yeah. sit down and watch a good Friday the 13th film, no, not this one. I would say seven, one to seven, you're good. Much past that, I don't know, maybe Jason Goes to Hell, but I know most people hate that one. Real quick here, you said one to seven. Are we including a new beginning on this? I I don't hate that one. God, I'm so indifferent on a new beginning. I, I like the cast. I, I like the characters. I like the setting, but... Man, the idea of like, well, I, Jesus, I don't know. Maybe I would have liked it if Tom Atkins was in it. <laughs> I don't, <laughs> you know, like, I don't know. Like, I'm so indifferent. I mean, and, and you know what? It's funny because there was some hot sex scenes in that movie. And it, did you guys know that the director of that one is a porn director? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It shows. Anyway. I mean, it is the yeah. fucking sleaziest Friday the 13th. Yeah, you know what? Um, there was supposed to be a death scene where that Tina girl, I think her name was, she was supposed to get a hatchet to the cooch, but then they, they couldn't do it. <laughs> I'm getting off topic here, but yeah. Um, you know, that that just reminds me, though. I think that's the only Friday the 13th they allowed uh, Marcus Nespool to watch when he was gearing up for the remake. They're just like, oh, no, you just need to watch part five. That's it. Just watch that one. That gives you the perfect feel of Friday the 13th. I, I think he's Dutch. This poor little Dutch man's like, okay, and watches it and is like, oh, so really sleazy and drugs and tits and... Right, because <laughs> the Friday the 13th remake, that's all it was. It was fucking... There was more tits in it than there was murder. Yeah. Uh, holy shit, man. I mean, uh, I'm not complaining. It's a decent film. It's definitely not the worst Friday the 13th, but it just didn't nail it. 
trying to think, what is my least favorite Friday the 13th? I know this is not what this episode is about, but what is my least favorite Friday the 13th film? Hmm. It, it's Jason X. Yep. Oh, my God. <laughs> thank you. So, oh. all right. Yeah, that's mine, too. And uh, so, yeah, no, it does tie in because, like I said, Jason doesn't quite act like himself. The production values are poor. The acting is fucking wretched. Like, I think the acting in this one, and Jason, you can correct me if I'm wrong, is right on par with Leprechaun 4. Ooh, I'd give it a little more than Leprechaun 4. But, like, overall, the films are it's fairly very... comparable, right? On a lot of ways, yeah, but um, I would say Jason X's acting is very TV show level. Oh, it's made for TV level for sure. Yeah terrible yeah that movie it reminds me of a sci-fi movie like if sci-fi got the rights to make a jason film so basically the asylum does uh friday the 13th yes yes that's the what asylum, this feels like to me the asylum could have done a better job with jason x it would be more entertaining probably <laughs> yeah they could have put like um zombified zoo animals in it it would have been better too uh all right guys We've kind of kicked the franchises around quite a bit. So let's take a little break. And uh, why don't we come back and talk about our actual favorite horror films from space? Yeah. Before we sign off, I just got to ask everyone, you guys mind if I go tug on my penis a little bit before we come back? Is that, I is mean, that okay? it's going to be a short time. So, yeah, go for it, man. Well, it's a, it's a short experience, you know. I'm a short guy with a small penis. I just Small Paul, remember that? A call back from another episode, you know. All right. We'll see you guys in a little bit. Oh, fuck. I almost, I almost tried to do, like, a country song about my dog dying and my uncle and my wife losing my job and just... <laughs> uh, just uh, it's such a fucking cliche country song. And my dog died in my arms And the very next day my wife lost her job And the very next day my uncle died in my lawn Oh, God kicked me in the nuts COVID-19 came down the bend <laughs> <laughs> And we have our closing song <laughs> Never, ever, ever under any circumstances say I'll be right back Because you won't be back I'm getting another beer, you want one? Yeah, sure. I'll be right back! Oh! Anyone actually need a break? I'm gonna go pee due to boredom. I have to pee. Uh, how did we want to bring this back? Well, I don't know. Maybe we could just bring it back by asking each other, how should we bring this back? And, and then, oh, oh, it said, welcome back, welcome back. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> Fair enough, but... Are we back? Welcome to the round table. And, you know, I've really come to love this segment because we all bring a film to it that we love about whatever subject we're talking about. And we have no fucking idea what the other guys are going to bring up. So for this one, I actually prepared a couple just to make sure that I have something fresh to talk about. But... I just kind of have to say that no matter where this goes... Where am I going? We won't need eyes to see. <laughs> because I think, I think it goes without saying that we have to talk about Event Horizon. Because I know that's probably at least one person's pick. And, you know, if it wasn't so fucking obvious and going to be someone else's pick, it's probably my pick. Oh, God damn it! Can I just go first then? Because that's my fucking pick. Son of a bitch. I assumed it would be somebody's. That's why I wanted to just kind of dive into it right now. Yeah. I just watched it just a few hours ago again. And for me, like, yes, you know, you have the fun aspect of, you know, Jason X and Leprechaun in space and just in Hellraiser 4 was its own thing and all that. But Event Horizon is still legit scary if you allow yourself to dive into the story of, of the movie. You know, uh, there's, of course, parts of it that's a little outdated because it is from 97, um, which, by the way, was Hellraiser 4. Uh, and did that come out in 97 as well? No, I think that was 92 or 93. No, Hellraiser yeah. 3 came out in 92. Uh, I was going to say, I thought it was 94, so... Mm. 
Maybe, maybe someone should look into that while we're talking. I don't know. Um, but Event Horizon came out in 97. I have always been a fan of Paul Anderson's style of movie making. We established that on, you know, two episodes ago with my top 10. Um, I, you know, I was a huge fan of Mortal Kombat. I believe that was his, one of his first movies. And then they gave him this huge fucking budget to do Event Horizon. Um, and I think that movie had like a $60 million budget. It had a huge budget, didn't it? Um, it had a big budget, yeah. Uh, it was 96. 96, okay. Okay, so Hellraiser Bloodline came out in 96, then Event Horizon came out in 97, at least uh, according to what it said on Netflix earlier. Um, but, uh, god damn, like, I watched it earlier, and I actually did watch that with my mom, because uh, that's a classic movie for her as well. So, um, and there's not much in that movie that, you know, you can't sit down and watch with just about anyone. But with that being said, it is a fucking scary movie in its own way, you know? Like, if you just look at it for its special effects and, and all that, then yeah, it's kind of typical run of the mill. But if you actually dive into the story of it, the fact that, it, you know, you figure out by the end of it that the black hole was a gateway to hell and back, it might not be original. I give you guys that it's not original, but it's it was fucking awesome. Like, and it still is. I love that movie. <laughs> uh, it's always held a special place in my heart. It was actually the first horror film I saw in theaters. Um, I was too young to see it by myself, so my mommy took me to go see it. It A good was, family film. Right? Yeah. It was the first uh, horror film I ever wrote a review for. Now, that can't be found anywhere because this was fucking 97, and I wrote it for fucking school for extra credit because I was never a good student and extra credit is why I graduated. But... It's one of those ones that I've visited time and time again. Um, it used to have regular rotation on HBO or Cinemax or one of them. And I watched this a lot. This was one of those ones that actually got to me and creeped me out. So being that horror junkie looking for that fix, I just kept coming back every time like, ooh, <sighs> Mr. Event Horizon, can I? Can I can I have another fix, please? Just 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 a little bit more fear. Just 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 hook me up. Give give me give me that kid with the bad legs and and and, and the the blood flowing at me and 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 the the scenes of hell and you don't need eyes to see and and all. The, give me more of that, please. <laughs> the kid with the bad legs was that one of my long lost family members? Oh no, man! I was actually going to ask why didn't you ever tell us that you acted in this film. Oh, um, because that was back before I had um, any rights. So oh. I had yeah, not rights to the film, but just human rights. Right. You yeah. Know? No, I got gotcha. you. Um, yeah. But uh, and I think you guys will agree with this is his name Sam Neill. He nailed it in this fucking film. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The professor or the doctor or whatever. He man like he, he was so he was good as the sympathetic character at first. But then they just did this natural flow like, I can't even pinpoint in the movie where he, like, snapped or, you know what I mean, or just, it was just a gradual change. Like, you didn't even see too fucking late, so to speak, you know? I think that's what I like about his character, too, is because we never really see him normal, and, and just kind of like The Shining. We we pick up with him, and he's already broken. Like, he, he is already a man that is damaged. And then mm -hmm. you put him into this environment and it just pushes him over the edge. But it's, it's not cartoony. It's not over the top. Like, it is subtle and it is believable that this guy just fucking cracks. Ah, oh, man. I know I said it a ton of times, but just this idea that, like, a gateway to hell is somewhere out in the universe. Like, that, that's so fucking interesting to me. Like... Oh, I don't know. It, like, and I wondered after I watched it just a couple hours ago again. Um, what's his name, Doctor Weir or yes. Weir or whatever? Weir. Um, I wonder if, like, what was his intentions in the very beginning? Was his intention to go onto that ship and not ever fucking leave it, or did he actually get possessed by it? And and it almost seemed like he got turned on by the ship at a certain point because it was teasing him with his dead wife or, or whatever. Which, by the way, I could have went the rest of my life without seeing his dead wife naked, but that's another story. Um, yeah, he almost had like a romantic relationship with the ship and and hell itself, and there were so many like. 
subtext in, in this whole thing that that's that's what intrigues me about it. I personally don't think that he was um, intending to go out there and find a gateway to hell, so to speak. I think it's more uh, in a very similar to Hellraiser fashion that it enticed him and he gave in to the darker impulses of himself. Yeah, I agree. And I I think it used the images of his wife to kind of sway him to, you know, tempt him into going to the dark side. Yeah, and, and and again, that's what's great about the movie is the fact that we can even have this debate about it because they don't give you a clear-cut answer. You could go either which way on it with his character. Um, that Lawrence Fishburne, he did a great job. Oh, uh, hell yeah. As, uh, some of the other characters I thought fell a little flat a little bit. Um, but I don't know, my, Baby Boy? I, I really liked his character too. Yeah. Did they even show him die? Like he was on the ship and he he almost got sucked out of the ship, you know, when he was possessed or whatever. But they pulled him back in. Like they were all like, "Oh, we could patch him up. He ain't gonna look pretty, but he'll probably survive." But that was the end of of him. Like they didn't show what the fuck. I mean, but then again, the whole ship exploded at the end. Spoilers, but the whole ship exploded at the end, right? And then I what think, the fuck? I think he was in one of those isopods. Uh, those stasis pods and i i think that's why we just didn't really see him throughout the the third act is he was so fucked up that he was just in stasis kept alive yeah so. all right yeah i guess that's yeah you know, i think that was the one thing when i was watching earlier it's like yeah they sh- i wish they would have like tied that up just a little bit better and eh. either that or just let him die maybe maybe she should have just died at the end but if that would have happened Lawrence fishburne's character arc where he revealed towards the end that he left that one guy behind in his past, that wouldn't have had as much of an impact, I guess, if they let baby boy die, you right. know, you guys agree with that. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, again, it just like all these other movies in space, event horizon, isn't a perfect film, but in my opinion, it is one of the best in space horror films, maybe with the exception of, you know, the classics like alien and stuff like that. It's, it's so fucking good, and, and like you pointed out before, there is so much to it. Um, like, a lot of the doors kind of look like coffins. Uh, the spaceship is very cathedral-like, and then at certain angles, when you're actually seeing the event horizon, it kind of looks like a cross, like the general shape of it. And there's so much imagery in it, and, and so many layers to the story, like, Weir's wife killed herself and you're never quite sure why that is and you know all these different little things they they developed all the characters but the story moves fucking quick right you're right they never really explained why Weir's wife killed herself or why Weir had such terrible taste in women (laughs) (laughs) hey real quick before we move on um because I'm not sure when this episode will air but Scream Factory is planning a release of uh, Event Horizon. What do you guys think the chances are of them potentially finding that footage that's supposedly lost forever and maybe not getting it um, put into the film itself, but at the very least getting it as bonus features so we can finally fucking see it in in motion? I would say poor because um, as we talked about off air, the work print was somehow stored in a salt mine in, like, Transylvania, Bulgaria, some shit like that, which I don't even know how the fuck that happens. But, it's cool. Just go talk to Dracula about it, and he'll fucking give it up. But I assume that that's probably not the best environment to store it in. Uh. Um, And with their own release, they said they were working hard at finding additional footage. So it's just like, oh, so you guys don't even have a resource, and you're just trying to hook us with the the little glimpse that you're going to see additional footage is like, Oh my God, it's finally going to be the director's cut. And I'm thinking they're just not going to get it. I think it's just a ploy. But here's the thing though. Scream factory has a good reputation. Am I right, Jason? They have a good reputation for, they know their fan base. There's one movie label out there that knows their fucking fan base. It's scream factory. And I don't think that they would have even alluded to any extra footage at all. If they don't have something they have to have something because they know people are going to – they know people would only want to double dip or quadruple dip into another Event Horizon DVD or Blu-ray if there was something that we wanted. Something. 
I, oh man, I see. I would normally agree with you, but anymore, I think Scream Factory's kind of they're starting to lack on the the bonus features, like um, Escape from L.A. Bare fucking bones, almost. A lot of the newer stuff doesn't have a lot of good special features. Like okay, um, April Fool's Day, I bought their new edition, and there's like two or three special features on it. That, that's really it. How how's the transfer on Escape from L.A.? Because I was actually thinking about purchasing that one. I I haven't got it yet. You son of a bitch, Jason. I'm, can I'm you not the it? biggest fan of Escape from L.A., but it, it's Snake Plissken, so I, I will get it. Just I haven't got it yet. Jason, we're gonna have to find a new guy here. He is he said two things I don't like in this motherfucking episode? You shitting on Scream Factory, and you just said you don't like Escape from L.A. <laughs> it, I'm going to be the asshole and you're going to want to get rid of both of us because I'm not a big fan of Event Horizon. Oh, oh I, shit. <laughs> That's it, I quit! I fucking quit! No, I'm just Finally! <laughs> Why don't you like Event Horizon? Yeah. Tell, it, talk to me about that. Don't get me wrong. I do not think it's a bad movie. I don't hate the movie. I just don't really like it and i don't think it's worth all the hype and praise that everyone puts on it i think a lot of the writing is really obvious and um while it is visually stunning and there are some fantastic actors like uh sam neill and fishburn and uh even jack or jake noseworthy i always forget which one it is um it's a well-designed movie, but it comes across as a lot of style over substance for me. But if other people get a lot of stuff out of it, that's great, and they enjoy it. I have no problem with that. Would you say it's fair to say that – because I, I was thinking this a little bit earlier because I was trying to look at it from a different perspective other than my fanboy perspective. But mm-hmm. would you say it's fair that Event Horizon does good on buildup but lacks just a tad bit on the payoff? Yeah, I can go with that. And yeah. one of the things I remember is when I was seeing it in theaters, the movie got to the point where they were pointing out the explosive devices and warning that they're there in case something goes wrong and they have to separate the bridge from the rest of the ship. I turned to my friend and said, this is what we in the writing business call really obvious foreshadowing. <laughs> right. It's almost like they thought the audience was going to be stupid. It does that a lot for me. And it's a really on the nose movie, but I can't deny it's well made, at least. It just isn't my bag of tea kind of thing. Yeah, no, it definitely has its flaws. And I don't know, it, I, that's what I was thinking earlier, too. Like, if you took out all of the story elements and just saw the big scenes in it, you're right. It's it's pretty typical run-of-the-mill. There's not much to it that's special. So. I, I think the best way to kind of put it for me is it's it's the shining in space. Um it's not at that level, but it mm-hmm. to me it, it's along the same lines. And it, the story's not original. I mean, it's reminiscent of The Shining and Hellraiser and so much other stuff that we've seen. I just think the atmosphere and some of the things they do playing on the characters is good enough. And it's it's always been one that has stuck with me. Now it's not what I'm going to talk about, so I just want to put that out there. All right. We covered, I think, everything we need to cover about Event Horizon. Well, we- uh, real quick before we move on, and we forgot to do this last week, but last week on the last episode, um, what would you rate this one? Oh, oh man, god damn it! Because you know my fanboy perspective really takes over. Uh, you know, like I, I really was stretching, you know, to try to agree with Jason on his <clears throat> bullshit outlook of it. But uh, I mean, for that, me, that's fine. It, it, it's your outlook. I mean, every time you see a film, it, it's a different experience. So, damn it, I, I gotta give this one four out of five. I, I, I don't have anything like you know clever the four out of five, but I, yeah, four out of five for me. Not perfect. And uh, yeah, <laughs> got it. Yeah, see that so, that's right where I am. The last time I saw it was probably a month ago, and I 100% agree it is flawed, but I still thoroughly enjoy it, and I give it I give it uh, uh, four severed eyes out of five. Ooh, yeah, I give it four Lawrence Fishburns out of five. If if there was four <laughs> Lawrence Fishburns, they might have been a happier ending. <laughs> <laughs> Or the crew members might have been uh, saved. I don't know. 
All right. Um, since I went last, uh, I'm going to go next. So mine's the obvious choice. Mine is Alien. Now, I kind of went back and forth and I actually had to rewatch them because I wasn't sure. Now, I also really like Prometheus. And as blasphemous as it may be to put it on par with Alien, I think it's nearly as good. Um, in all honesty, I will say that if, uh, if Prometheus had actually tied more in to Alien, I think that would help me enjoy it that much more. Like, if if it was more like The Thing from 2011? 12. 12? 12, 12, I was really those, fucking yeah. close. In that area. Yeah. So if it was more in line with that, with how it just booked in straight to the next film, I think I would have really liked that, but I thoroughly enjoy Prometheus. But no, um, I have to clarify this because as far as I'm aware, there are three editions of Alien out there. Now, I'm talking about the, oh, fuck, 2003 director's cut. That's my preferred edition of it. Because there's the theatrical. Uh, there's the 2003 director's cut, which is when they did uh, the big release of the Alien quadolo qu Quadology. Yeah, that's the word. And they had everyone kind of do their own director's cut. Except for, you know, the guy who refused to come back because he fucking hated the experience. But, uh, I think that's the best version. Now, I know last year, Scott put out another director's cut when it came to 4K. So, and, it, and, it, and I will I will freely say this, it is wrongly labeled on the box set of 4K that it is the 2003 but it is not that same one because he's made more cuts. Which, oddly enough, I'm pretty sure the 2003 director's cut is actually shorter than the theatrical cut. I wasn't aware of this. How many cuts are there of this film? As far as I'm aware, there's those three. So That sounds yep. about right, I think, yeah. What is the big difference? What is the differences between all three cuts? Okay, so the theatrical is... Well, it's the theatrical. It's the one everyone knows. Um, The 2003... He went back and he trimmed scenes. So altogether, I think there's uh, about an eight minute difference between the theatrical and the 2003. Now, I might be a little off on that year, but I think it's a 2003 director, Scott. Eight minute difference, I'm pretty sure. And he trimmed scenes up to make it flow a little quicker, to make it more like a modern film instead of so much like a 70s film. And he added in some scenes that were cut. Like, it, it just added to dynamics. Like, um, uh, fuck, I can't remember the one character's name. But once Ripley shows up at quarantine at the sick bay, she, like, attacks Ripley because Ripley was going to leave them out for quarantine. Uh, there's a scene where, well, Ripley is setting up the auto-destruct on the ship that she finds the captain cocooned up which that's not in the theatrical at all. So it was established in the very first one that the aliens cocoon people up. Uh, hmm. Just general little things like that. Um, we get, well, there's a fucking scene, well, a little addition to the scene where the mechanic is trying to get the cat and he's in that room where the chains are hanging and the water's dripping. There is a shot in that where you just see the xenomorph hanging from the ceiling, but it's subtle. Like, if you don't really notice it, it just kind of blends in, and it's such a fucking great shot. And that's one of the things I absolutely love about Alien. Um, the cinematography, it is just a fucking stunning film. Altogether, I mean the world feels believable and realistic. Like the spacecraft is old and dingy and it looks lived in. The characters are relatable and believable. They feel like real people having conversations and relationships with one another. Just really good shit like that. I mean, everyone's likable. Um, and overall, there's nothing that I can pinpoint and say is wrong with the film. To me, it is a masterpiece. And I can't really say that it's not my favorite film when when i think of space horror this is the one that comes to mind and it's it's so fucking good if you have not seen 
this director's cut, I really do suggest it because it flows very nicely. And the whole movie is just, it, it's building tension and, and atmosphere. And you end up with Ripley and just racing through the spacecraft, trying to stay alive. And then, finding out that she may have just put herself in an even worse situation. It's oh, so good. And then James Cameron took over and made it into an action movie. And that was the third cut. No, that's, that's part two. Sorry. Oh, 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 oh. I was just alluding to space Marines. And so you said there was a third cut though. What's the third cut? The third cut is the one he put out uh, with the 4k release. And I think he went back and it's, kind of a combination between the theatrical and the the previous director's cut. So like he takes out a couple of the additions that he put in with the director's cut that he, for whatever reason, he said he doesn't like the flow of it. I, I think that version flows perfectly. Um, he added in some of the, the things that he cut out. So it, it's really just a combination of the two. I really prefer the 2003. I think it flows nicely. I like seeing Dallas all cocooned up. Um, I don't know why he has such a problem with that, but I enjoy well, he, it. So He's kind of like a girl, isn't he? He just can't make up his fucking mind on his own movie. <laughs> well, that, what? Uh, that's, that's funny because there's a lot of filmmakers that have such a hard time stopping with a film that so many people consider a masterpiece. Like... When you're talking about this, there's so many people that will defend the theatrical cut, and I'm not going to tell them they're wrong. I just don't enjoy it as much. And, like, he's still toying with it to this day. Like, oh, we're going to do a 4K version. Okay, well, let's put it out. And then, he, you know, he's looking at it. He's like, oh, well, I can fix this and that. And it's the same thing kind of with Kubrick, where clear up to the day he died, he was editing and re-editing The Shining. There, there are so many stories of different cuts and lengths and versions of that that he had done that has just never seen the light of day that's mind-boggling. Just wait for the 8K version of Alien. It has all <laughs> deleted scenes and bloopers in it. I wouldn't be surprised. CG! New CG! Everything's new! <laughs> that's, that's another thing that they, they did when they remastered it, is they kind of fixed some of the computer graphics and stuff so it doesn't look quite as dated. Uh, what was your first version that you saw, ever? Uh, <laughs> funnily enough, my mom actually... Funnily? Funnily? Yeah, we're going to go with it. It's a okay. word now. But, it's a word. Uh, <laughs> funny enough, my mom actually rented me the theatrical cut you know back on vhs uh for me and uh she was the one that turned me on to it i enjoyed it but i didn't love it back then i mean i was a kid i was all about friday the 13th you know uh fast moving a lot of gore and this is just slow methodical full of atmosphere and tension and the older i get the more i appreciate these 70s kind of slow burn movies you know gotta tell you real quick before we move on and you guys are gonna fucking shit on me when i say this but i did not watch one single alien movie i never ever watched any of the alien movies until i watched alien versus predator first and then the documentaries that were on that original dvd release uh was showing scenes and they were talking about the old alien movies and i was like holy shit i gotta watch the old one so then i borrowed that quadrilogy or whatever dvd set from a friend who had that set and i just i slammed through all of them so i think it's a good franchise i think they're all pretty good um i i think too a lot of people love to i think it's a little too actiony it's a little too cheesy it's still not bad um i really like how bleak three is now, I, when I'm talking about three, I'm talking about that assembly cut because I think that is vastly superior to the butchered theatrical cut that we got. Um, it's called the assembly cut because the director refused to come back and give an actual director's cut, so they they took the work print and reworked the film to be what his original idea was to put out before they kind of took it away from him and re-edited it. Why did the director refuse to come back on part three? Uh, because from my understanding, 
he fought with the studio a whole lot about what the film should be. And then in the end, they kind of took it away from him and re-edited it. And I think they even had another director shoot a couple pickups and stuff like that. So he just wanted nothing to fucking do with it. Another Alan Smitty. Uh, Basically, yeah. Yeah, that sucks. And so the assembly version of part three is way better. Yeah, I really think so. Does it have like more uncensored gore in it? Is that something in it? It's just the story's better. It makes more sense. Um, I think it just flows better. Uh, and then you have that weird Joss Whedon space pirates kind of fun one. And then, you know, it comes back with Prometheus. And like I said, I, I think Prometheus is fucking stunning. It is a beautiful film. I just rewatched that uh, two days ago. And in 3D, oh, God, it's it's so good. Yeah, Prometheus is a fucking great movie. Isn't there one right. more after that one? Uh, Covenant. 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 I saw I that in like theaters, and I don't remember liking it at all. But after watching Prometheus and having such a fucking blast with that, I'm going to rewatch yeah. it here shortly. Yeah, Prometheus is on another level, and then Covenant just kind of is a disappointment. Um, Prometheus was a fucking great movie. I watched that one on Cinemax years ago. Yeah. I thoroughly enjoy Prometheus. That's that's so fucking good. I think we might be the only three people that enjoyed Prometheus. <laughs> uh, Prometheus gets shit on quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah, I think oh. so too. Yeah, I wow. don't quite get it because I I think it's really good. The story is layered. Um, I like that we kind of get the backstory on the Xenomorphs. Um. I think the cinematography, the whole film together is beautiful. Uh, it's fucking dark and realistic and like first contact and, oh, what's this thing? Let's look at it. And it just fucking kills them. And then and, and how it spreads. Um, the Just the fear once that guy's sick and he's not coming on. Yes, he is. And then they just fucking torch him. And then he comes back. Us. Oh. Real quick, um, I'm sorry about this because I know this episode's all over the place, but I forgot to even bring that up when we were talking about Event Horizon. Why do you guys think that that movie was shit on so much back then? Because, uh, like, it did poorly financially, oh, it, Yeah, it right? did real bad at the box office. It's kind of like John Carpenter's The Thing, right? Like, it was shat on at the time, like, you know, but nowadays, it, people, it's got, like, a cult following. Oh, it's got Both. a huge cult following. Um, I think it was just... The public wasn't ready for it, much like the thing is it was kind of dark, it was bleak, and doesn't really give you a whole lot of hope or anything, and, and the public just didn't want that. Right. So weird. Anyway. Uh, yeah, no, I have nothing really to add to that with Alien. It's a fantastic movie. Uh, I remember seeing it the first time over at a friend's house. He had rented it, and we watched it on this... God, I think it was like a 15 or 17 inch television screen. And I just remember it really freaking me out because I was at that point where I wasn't super into horror yet. And it was still really affecting me. And just the idea of this monstrous inhuman creature just stalking through the shadows and killing people and and the sounds of it, the atmosphere. It's just a fantastic movie. And... Would we agree to say that it is basically a slasher movie in space? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. And you brought up something that I completely forgot. The fucking <laughs> the design of everything in this is is so good. And, and the creature, masterful, is so inhuman looking and, and monstrous. It, it's, ah, oh, I love it. There was nothing like it. I mean, it's just so striking and unique. Right. Uh, for myself, uh, it's a masterpiece. It's a five xenomorphs out of five. Chest bursting fucking fives everywhere. Uh, yeah, I'd give it uh, four and a half or five chest bursters myself, depending <laughs> on the mood I'm in that day. And here's to Ian Holm, who just recently passed away for his role as, uh, was it Bishop in this movie? Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Bishop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, geez, it's been years since I've seen the original Alien. Um, but I do remember thinking that, like, I did have a problem with the pacing of the film. I'm not a big fan of slower 70s, you know, like, I, I do want a little bit more action. 
But um, with that being said, I, it, from what I remember of it, I will give it three actually decent looking Sigourney Weavers out of five. Mm. But uh, no, I, I think you should check out the 2003 director's cut because I, I think he, he fixes enough of the pacing issues. I, I think you might enjoy that version the best. That had to have been the version I saw, though, because that's in the uh, quadrilogy. But you you box. have the choice of watching the director's cut or the the theatrical. So I don't I don't know which one you watch, but oh yeah, may, maybe I pick the theatrical because that's how I do it. Whenever whenever I I have the option, I always watch the theatrical first of a film, and then I like going and watching the other the longer cuts of the film. So yeah, that's probably what I did fuck me right but the funny thing is is like i said that the director's cut's shorter so <laughs> yeah fuck i don't fuck fuck me right god damn it <laughs> jason just shit on me and call me a hot fudge sunday you know what i mean nope. <laughs> <laughs> so i guess it's my turn now it is yeah. all right i've got an alien in my pants yo so Alien probably would have been my number one choice, but I didn't want to go with the obvious one, but it's great that we got to talk about it anyways. Yeah, what the fuck are you trying to say, the obvious one? (laughs) Alien is the number one space (laughs) horror movie. None of us are going to deny it, are we? Well, Cody might because of his strange love of Event Horizon. I think Event Horizon's real good, too. I fucking guess I won't argue with you on this, Jason. I guess. Anyways... About a year ago, I was introduced to a movie that I actually really fell in love with, and it's worth pointing out for everyone, because I don't think it's very well known. And it's a little movie called Pandorum. Ah, fuck, I've heard of it. I've never seen it. It came out about 10, 11 years ago. And it's got a lot of similarities to Event Horizon. It takes place on a spaceship. Um, Well, I guess that's our our whole theme, isn't it? Um, It opens up with uh, the setup that Earth is going to shit, and they send out basically an arc to find a new planet to colonize. Because of space travel had to be done through the long way around, they put a bunch of people into suspended animation with uh, regular intervals where people will be woken up to maintain the ship for however long. And you rejoin at some point in the future where something has gone wrong, people have been woken up out of order, and the ship is on the verge of breaking down before reaching its destination. And there is a ton of alien creatures infesting the ship, that they have to deal with and get around trying to get the ship back in working order to basically keep the human race from dying out. Wait, 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 wait. Is this the one where it's like a whole kind of head fuck and they're actually crashed on a planet? Yes, it is. Oh, yes. Okay, I did see this one. Yeah, Dennis I remember. Dennis Quaid stars in it. Huh? Dennis Quaid stars in it. Yes, yes, uh, I did see this. No, this is a good movie. When I first watched it, I'm going, oh, is this movie going to go where I think it's going to go? I thought they were going to uh, have them land and they would have some sort of uh, thing where they would introduce a character and have him actually be named Adam and introduce an Eve. And I'm like, oh, they're not going to do that whole kind of um, the planet we live on is uh, however thousands of years in the future from this movie. They didn't go there, and I had like three or four different ideas where the movie was going to go, and it completely subverted all my expectations and just was a really enjoyable and surprising ride for the entire time. No, that's a great pick. I I remember having a lot of fun with that one. I love the twist ending, and uh, Mm -hmm. it's a fun ride getting there. Yeah. I unfortunately have not seen Pandorum. I definitely heard of it. And it's funny because I had it on my Netflix DVD queue to rent, but then I canceled my DVD subscription through Netflix because it was fucking pointless. So I unfortunately never got to see Pandora. I'm, I'm, I'm jealous. <laughs> no, I, I do suggest you you check that one out. I think it's it's really good. Um, because it, it's 
it's kind of a head fuck almost the whole way through because you're never quite sure what's going on because you follow this one character that just gets awoken. He doesn't know why, where he is, what's going on, and, like, everything's going wrong. The ship's all fucked up and... It's, yeah, it's, everyone yeah. when they wake up have a couple hours where their brains are still fuzzy and they don't quite remember everything, so they get to play with that of what the hell is going on. And it sets up a lot of mystery because they basically have short-term amnesia. Yeah, and that gets played throughout. No, that's a good fucking pick, man. Fuck. Yeah, uh, my friend told me about it. I saw it on Amazon, watched it one Saturday night, and I think I went back to my computer right after watching it and immediately ordered the DVD. Yeah, I don't blame you. Um, I don't remember it good enough to really go in depth on it, Mm -hmm. but uh, I do want to see it. Like Now that you brought it up and and brought it back to my memory, Mm -hmm. uh, it was one of those ones that I did enjoy. I saw it when it first came out. I didn't see it in theaters, but uh, I think once it hit Blu-ray and uh, I watched it a couple times. Uh, within the like two year time frame, I've probably seen it three or four times. Mm-hmm. So I, I remember thoroughly enjoying it. I just kind of forgot about it for some reason. Just because I like being a dick sometimes, I, whenever someone asks me to describe it, I say, it's the movie I wish Event Horizon was. Oh. You son of a bitch. <laughs> John, get rid of him. I don't think it's as dark as no, it's Event not. Horizon. It's still really good. Jason, you were waiting to throw that at me the whole fucking episode, wasn't you? Not deliberately, but I was <laughs> going to say it at some point. <laughs> all right, that's all right. I'll cry myself to sleep tonight. We'll see if you feel bad about that. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jason, what would you rate uh, Pandorum? Uh, last time I watched it, I gave it a four and a half out of five. Very nice. And since I talked about Prometheus so much, uh, I actually give that four and a half as well. I think I gave Prometheus a four. And just to be fair, with Event Horizon, I did give it a three and a half out of five because I do recognize it as a well-made movie. I think it's Paul W.S. Anderson's best film. Hmm. You know what? I think it is his best made film, like produced and all that, because, man, $60 million. Oh, Jesus. I think that was the budget, around $60 million. Yeah, you know? he got that because uh, Mortal Kombat was such a hit. It's like, oh, what do you want to do next? I want to do this haunted spaceship. Oh, here's $60 million. Yeah, that's right. I did hear that, that you know, he, there was such success with uh, Mortal Kombat that, yeah, you know, it's Event Horizon. I'm glad he did it. It was. I don't care what people thought about it at the time. It was, I don't care what Jason thinks about it, Ray. <laughs> Fuck you, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> you hear what I said, boy? Yeah, I heard. All right. You got to say it back to me. You got to say something back? Boy, the next words coming out of your mouth better be some Mark Twain shit because they're going to be carved on your tombstone. The rumors of my death have been greatly exaggerated. Oh, (laughs) that's some clever shit right there. (laughs) Boom. Uh, You got me. (laughs) I I submit to you. I don't submit to your bullshit rating of Event Horizon, though. So that'll have to be. We'll have to have like a uh, a, a boxing round of an episode one of these days. <laughs> no, not real boxing. Just you know, because you would beat me on that because I can't walk, let alone fight. So that'll be our Uve Bull episode. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, I've never seen Pandorum, so unfortunately, I can't give it a rating. But oh well. <laughs> Um, we don't actually know what we're going to do next. We might have a filmmaker on and talk about his two films. We might do anthologies. We might do anything. I have no fucking idea. We'll talk about it. We'll figure it out. We might just do, uh, like this one and do part fives and why part five seems to be the shitty sequel. You know what we could do? We could do an episode on sequels of franchises that was completely standout from the rest of the franchise, you know, like Halloween 3 and Friday the 13th Part 5, you know, shit like that. I don't know if there's enough material to have a full episode on it, maybe, but it could be a part of an episode. Maybe. We'll, we'll yeah. pin that on the bullshit board. Yeah. <laughs> we'll pin that on Jason's ass cheeks. 
Must we? <laughs> yeah, you got two of them, so we're gonna we're gonna pin all that shit on the left <laughs> ass cheek. You gonna <laughs> like it, boy? No. <laughs> Why does it suddenly sound like you're from fucking Deliverance? Oh, I don't know, but you gonna squeal like a pig. <laughs> oh man, that that fucks with my throat. <laughs> ah. You get on over there and you grab that sapling. Drop your britches, boy. Come on, squeal. Squeal for you me. You get on over there and drop your britches. I'm gonna put this penis in your butt. I don't know. I- <laughs> I've only seen Deliverance one time. It was a fucking... I, I didn't like it. So that's... Well, y'all, next week on Movie Misfits, we gonna go back to the woods and gonna find a pig and make him squeal, I guess. <laughs> that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna talk about Wrong Turn and Hills Have Eyes and all those motherfucking dumb Hillbilly Hill Kicks movies. Hillbilly Hill Horror. <laughs> Hillbilly Horror on the episode five. Movie Misfits, y'all. You know... Hillbilly Hell. That, that's actually an interesting... We already kind of talked about Rob Zombie, too, so we could kind of bring up some of his shit. But you just mentioned it, hillbillies and whatnot. I completely forgot to bring it up on our last episode talking about zombies. It's one thing that I kind of hold against uh, Tom Savini's Night of the Living Dead is the the people that are from the area sound like they're from fucking Tennessee. Like, oh, this is my poppy's place. And it's like, man, I'm from fucking rural Pennsylvania. I don't talk like that. What the fuck are you talking about? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you're not from Tom Savini's world, though. He lives like, in fucking it's... Pittsburgh. I live two and a half hours north in the fucking National Forest area. Oh. Yeah. I need to rewatch <laughs> that film. Yes, you do. It's a great film. But, yeah, uh, we'll be back with part five in two weeks. And uh, till then, keep watching movies and do whatever the fuck you want, people. Be a misfit. Yeah. Be a crippled misfit. Why the fuck not, right? Because I'm I'm not crippled, but if I could get workman's comp, sure. Oh, well, uh, fuck you. That's all I got to say. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say see you in the movie theaters, but we ain't doing that for another couple of months at least. So. At least. Do you think we'll ever see Tenet, or is it just going to keep getting delayed? We'll see you in the theaters, but not AMC theaters, probably. <laughs> <laughs> the big twist of Tenet, Christopher Nolan has already released it. Ooh. Catch on Netflix, everyone. There you go. <laughs> I don't know. Take us out to dinner, Jason. No. <laughs> okay, God. You sound so disappointed when you say, oh my God. You guys, I'm, I'm done with this. I gotta go. <laughs> we belong, Dan. Oh, God. There are certain rules that one must abide by in order to successfully survive a horror movie. Give me a break. My unborn crib midgets. Hella Dildonics. Yes! Oh my god. <laughs> Jason, you're my favorite now. Promise him you're not gonna put this in the episode. Uh, who are you? With movie. Misfits. You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go. Oh no! Mr. Alien! Don't touch my... my vagina! I'll add you to the Me Too movement, you son of a bitch! (laughs) Get away from her, you bitch! (laughs) (laughs) Meow! <laughs> I just need a vagina to possess! Meow! I've seen a movie like that. Oh, really? <laughs> what? Did it have triple X at the end of it? No. Oh, okay. But Ron Jeremy was in it. <laughs> oh, Ron Jeremy. Didn't he just get arrested? Yeah, he thing? did. God damn, Ron Jeremy! <laughs> Fuck! You hear that, Jason? He was pounding away at the editing. Oh, man, I was uh-huh. just going at it. He just has to put his balls back in his wife's purse, that's all. <laughs> As a teenager, I jerked off so many times at the thought of those robot titties. I'm just going to be honest with you guys. <laughs> Well, my soccer coach taught me a life lesson once, and it was just because there's a goalie 
doesn't mean you can't score. Oh, God. Jason, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing okay. Have you thought about me in the last week? (laughs) No, can't say that I have. Well, that's okay. I, um, I've thought about you in the last week or so. Oh, no. (laughs) I've thought about what kind of wild things I can say just to get a reaction out of you. Anything other than a deadpan reaction, of course. I am I am the king of deadpan reactions. When can I see your face? Never. <laughs> All right, I'm still, done fucking with. Still pictures, maybe those exist, but they're still very very rare. Yeah. You, hey, next time, can you just you know get a, like a, a animated picture of a big titty bitch for me, just so I have something, <laughs> just so I can have something pretty to look at. Jason, are you naked yet? We're getting ready to start. No, no naked for me. (laughs) Do you love me yet? We have upgraded you from tolerate to like. (laughs) All right, I'm I'm cool with that. All right, John, let's start the show before I make it any worse with Jason today. (laughs) God, that's better than whipping your cock out for me. That's that's so good. (laughs) And we're back to tolerate. (laughs) Damn it. (laughs) He's trying to act. Yeah. <laughs> it's terrible. Like, I know she's gay in real life, and that's fine, but hey, I'm handicapped. I'm considered half a man anyway, so does that count? <laughs> <laughs> pussy! That's all I got to say to you guys. Pussy, pussy, pussy. That's what life's all about. Pussy and horror films. You know I'm saying John Rhodes. 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 